Let's get this straight, Banana is the best character. He's the perfect mix between vertical and horizontal movement, which all the other vibrants are jealous of. But to prove my point, I realized I had to beat the whole game as Banana himself. So this is how I beat my adventure as Banana. In this part, we'll be covering World 1 with its easy mechanics and obstacles. Surely it'll be a breeze, right? Let's turn the town. I had a little bit of an extra jump while getting out of bed, but other than that, I got to the temple without any worries. Just a little universal glitch later, and our quest to get to the lore import of gems starts. Now the quickest way to get around is this ground pound into another ground pound, into another ground pound, which the noise could easily drive someone crazy, but other than that, this level was pretty easy. And if you're wondering, yeah, I made a mod just for this, I'll release it someday. <laughs> the only challenge in this level was the ending, where I had to perform this tricky wall jump movement, but other than that, it was like I was playing blindfolded. Level 2. I impressed everyone who has ever played this game in the first 5 seconds, and I heard up the tree platforming. This level was also pretty easy, except for a really tricky part near the end, where I had to abuse my iframes, and by correlation this fairy to get to the end, and then I had to pray that I can get Banana's elbow onto this wall to wall jump, so I can hit the balloon on Mach 20. Now everything up to this point has been really easy, and while playing this level, I thought I couldn't even make a video about it, but oh boy, a Grumbelt was about to smack me in the face the same I did to that balloon. So let me explain. Until the second half of this level, it was honestly pretty easy. A little hop here, a hold right there, it was fine. But then, this section came out. This is what I had to do. What I had to do was grab this fairy, re-grab the fairy, get hit, grab it again, and so I can go up here, grab this fairy, get through here without getting hit, so I can survive later when I'm supposed to use pistachio and just jump across. However, I don't have pistachio, and I was fucked. Also, jumping on the Grumbat was way easier said than done. This Grumbat part took me dead ass <laughs> 10 minutes, I think, and that was pain. That whole section was pain. <laughs> uh, why do I do this? After the hell of that level, I eventually was able to have a break in the only level that doesn't have character barriers. I'm not kidding, this is the only level that can be beat with anyone dumb enough to use these platforms. The developers expect you to know the rules by now and make it through the game without any challenges, as long as you swap characters. I mean, the most challenging thing in this level was thinking about the next one. Remember how we had such an easy time with level 4? That was child's play compared to the hell of this level. The plan was getting to these yellow platforms, just out of reach of Bernardo's mini jump, and for a while, I gave up. So I paused the recording and I went on to YouTube for a while. While looking up Bad Line Fight, I did see that someone called Toxic Chimney had done exactly what I was looking for. He saved like an hour of my life, probably. Basically, what you want to do is hug the right wall. Even though Banana's hat may get stabbed by the spikes, he can still barely jump over to the platform with a ground pound cancel. And then I did it. I got to the second part, and here I could feel the end. All I had to do was hit the rocks like I normally would with Cardinal. Oh, shit, that's not good. So now what I have to do is wait for Madeline to get really close and then hit the rock without getting hit. Easy, right? But eventually this happened. And that's the moral of our story, kids. Make sure to Google any fucking problems you have. I'll do well too if this video actually does good. Thank <laughs> you.